Clippers. We are here in downtown Portland and we are standing right in front of the Portland Center for, Perform for Performing Arts. And what brings us down here today is incredibly awesome. I was actually invited by Shannon Wheeler, the cartoonist, to come on down and check out some of his work. Shannon has been a very, very awesome guy. He called me back personally and was like, come on down, check it out. I went in the lobby the other day, they weren't open, and Shannon's got a an entire display here in the lobby, um, and it's incredible. Now, you guys might not know who Shannon Wheeler is. Shannon Wheeler is a very renowned cartoonist here in Portland, better known for Too Much Coffee Man, but he actually has his work on display here inside the lobby at the Portland Five Center for the Arts. And I'm gonna wait here because I could have sworn I saw, oh, there we go, Forbidden Love. As you can see, this lobby is incredibly beautiful already. It's the Performance Art Center. They do a ton of art here. They do a ton of music. They do a ton of shows. Um, and in fact, I believe at one point they actually had a Too Much Coffee Man opera, which I'll insert some pictures here in a bit. Um, but let's get into some of Shannon's artwork. I'm so excited. Um, like I said, he's got this whole lobby here um, with his, you know, like little one pieces. All right, so like I said, all along the lobby here and in the front, Shannon's got his pieces. So let's check this out. First off, we've got these little one-liners here that he does, which I thought was so cool. And I was talking with Shannon just briefly on the phone and he was telling me about, you know, it's a lot harder when you have an idea to just kind of confine it to a one, you know, one square kind of Gary Larson style. Uh, but here we are, we're in the part of the movie that's usually a montage. <laughs> that is so funny. And so, yeah, just these little one-liners are so good. And then you can actually come down here and purchase his work as well. And so there's all the links as well. And, uh, you know, very reasonably priced for how, how awesome these are. And uh, here's another one here. The secret of life is giving up. <laughs> He's got his buddy there just kind of chilling watching TV with like a snack. <laughs> I love his humor. It's so funny and it's so like, it's so subtle but it's so kind of out there as well. Okay, here we go. We got like a, we got like an Adam West Batman here. He only wanted to talk about his car. <laughs> that is so good. And uh, let's see, this one's titled, okay, yeah, titled, He Only Wants to Talk to His Car. Um, that is too funny. I can imagine, you know, wanting to go meet Batman. <laughs> He's talking about his tool belt and his car and stuff. That is so funny. And that's like the old Adam West Batman, too, so it makes it even funnier. So, all right, so we're moving on here. Here's another piece here. Look like this one's uh, 2020. And we've got the robot. Oh, they're kind of, oh, look at that. They're kind of like looking around instead of the fire. It's a, it's a light bulb. That is so funny. So kind of caveman meets, you know, new age. <laughs> that is awesome. I love his robots too. Those are really good, Shannon. Let's continue to take a look here. In fact, I'm pretty much just going to show all these just because Actually, I'll leave just a few, just so if you guys are in the neighborhood, make sure you come down here because this isn't going to last much longer. He said maybe through February, um, but okay, let's see. Oh, so he's holding the giant cassette tape and you may not get this joke unless you're like an 80s, 90s kid, um, but you still have a giant pencil. We would actually take the pencils and stick them in the tapes. And then um, if the tape, you know, back then we didn't have CDs or digital, so it was all you know, vinyl or cassette, and you would have to stick the pencil inside the cassette to rewind it and kind of get the tape back. So that is hilarious. And I love the fact that he actually wrote that with a pencil. Look at that. If you, if you take a gander there, it's actually in a pencil. So that makes it even funnier. Nice. That is too funny, dude. I love the subtle humor too with the, uh, like I said, with the pencil actually being used for the joke. <laughs> that is great. And you got to love his cartoons too. I mean, his, his characters are so distinct and unique, you know, like 
some of the best Larson and graining you know you could really tell his cartoons and same with Wheeler's work next step monetize <laughs> so again the caveman meets like digital era and uh, oh my gosh that is too funny okay guys so we're in luck I just realized his art is literally the entire lobby it's not just this section over here it's actually this section and the whole back so i'm gonna have it to where you guys are gonna have to come down here and check out some of his work or jump online i don't want to you know show every single one of his pieces uh, because i do want you guys to come down here and check them out maybe you know pick one up uh, for your art collection or as a gift um, well so we'll check out a few more but like i said i don't want to i don't want to give away you know too much of his work oh look at this this is perfect for youtube and he's on the tr he's under the troll bridge and we got two trolls here and he's on the computer and the other trolls actually saying you're a terrible troll <laughs> i know some of those actually and i really like his little trolls those are hilarious <laughs> nice <laughs> Okay, I gotta show this one though. Check this out. So this girl's on her on her computer here with her cat, and the cat. You know how cats like to walk across people's key keyboards. At least mine does. She's like, you make the best passwords. You know, it's just <laughs> with all the different buttons that it pushes. You know, it's like, what in the heck? <laughs> That's a good way to roll with it, though. I like that. Look at this one too. This is so funny. So this guy's got the sled and look at the size of that hill. And he's literally telling the Grim Reaper like, look, I got this, hold my beer. <laughs> no. Side holding class, $10. And he's got it upside down, darn it. And the guy's like, should we tell him? <laughs> nice. All right, guys. So a couple days later, we are here in southeast portland and i'm extremely excited because this is kind of the tie-in to this vlog as well but uh shannon wheeler himself that's right too much coffee man contacted me and when we were talking i said hey why don't we meet up real quick grab some coffee and um, that way i can thank you in person as well for having me and uh, he was down so we're gonna meet up here in southeast portland at a coffee shop called the Albina Press, and I believe it's on about 50th and Hawthorne. So uh, yeah, stay tuned. Wow, dude, how, how cool is that? <laughs> to start by meeting, and then he brings along his book that we actually just left from the good folks at the Performance Art Center. Let us in, actually on like a day off. Shannon pulled some strings for me, and I gotta give you mad chairs <laughs> for that. And uh, thanks again so much for meeting. And uh, this is just so incredibly awesome of you. And I have to say, very, very honorable of him as well, you guys. He called me back personally. I kind of called, or I know I actually went in to yeah. the art center. And I always like to ask permission. So if you guys are vlogging, it always pays to ask because then you get actual personal callbacks, which Shannon did. And I thought, first off, that was so honorable, honorable of you. And then I had you on the line. I said, maybe we can meet up, grab a cup of coffee. Too much coffee, man, already for me. <laughs> you know, his cartoons are so awesome, you guys, too. And, and as you've seen, what we saw at the art center where it's on display, you can kind of, you know, interpret these how you want. And me, like I shared with Shannon, is kind of like ex relationship kind of status where maybe you shouldn't go with, you know, maybe you shouldn't love that one or whatever. And it's, is that kind of where you were rolling exactly with it? where it was, yeah. Just kind of. It's the loves that you shouldn't have, yep. Just kind of take it as you perceive it, or that's where you, where you were going with it. You know, I, I try to think of something of like, here's the source, and then I try to think of, okay, is there ambiguity in this? And then is there negative ambiguity? And then try to think like, 
you know, some ambiguity is good, but yeah, there's usually a source. It, you know, there's usually a point, and uh, like with the New Yorker cartoons, it's a puzzle that you're trying to. Yeah, a lot of the cartoons are puzzles, is how I see them. That's so cool. Yeah, and I really like, I think I shared with you when we talked earlier, too, how you, um, you know, went with mostly the one-liners. The mm -hmm. one, now, is that hard for you to work those in, or do you find those easier? The, like, kind of one punchline, you know, um, I guess, how would you call them? One, yeah, one-liners or one-gags or... Gag cartoons. I mean, it's still a new, relatively new art form, and so... The terms aren't as refined as, as you know. So it's for me. There's a little bit of a fuzzy edge, but a gag cartoon is um, is, is a pretty straightforward. Well, they one. they hit me good. I had a good time down there. I have to say, I put the camera down and just had some good laughs in oh, there. And a, a couple of them, here. like I really, really loved. I thought this was my favorite, actually, mm. the snail. But I really loved the Batmobile. How you brought oh, back yeah. the Bruce Wayne, the old <laughs> Batman, and that it was like you know you go to the Comic Con and that's all they want to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> Because, yeah, and, that, and that's so touchy because as a fan of comics and Batman, yeah. I'm going, uh-oh. But it was also so perfect because, <laughs> you know, just like me, I love to talk about myself. You guys, come on. Who does it? No. Totally. <laughs> but this is so cool. So he's got the, as you guys can see, he's got the Mad Magazine hat on, which I was like right away. That is so cool. And so you actually had your work published? Yeah. Yeah, I've sold a few cartoons to them. Very I cool. mean, now they're doing all reprints. So, you know, they might re, you know, re, re, rebirth it, um, I'm hoping, because okay. I liked being in there. Oh, heck yeah. As kids, I know, remind me, was it Cracked Magazine or Mad Magazine, where you fold the back to That's make... That's Al Jaffe, that was the, that was Mad. Cracked was always okay. kind of like the methadone. <laughs> You know, version like of Mad. Waiting oh my for the gosh. next Mad to come out, and you're like, well, right. there's crack. You're like, you're like, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't really make me Oh mad. my gosh, I'm guilty of grabbing both, but you're right, it was the filler. That's yeah. so funny. Um, yeah, I think I was guilty too as a kid, maybe putting, I think you would go to pick them up and they'd already be folded. Like people would fold oh, them yeah. before they bought them, and you're yeah. like, oh, like. <laughs> so that's so cool. So, you know, inspirations, a lot of inspirations, or. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, definitely. I mean, they, like the the Batmobile was at a Comic Con, and there's a guy with the Batmobile, and then I go to talk to him because I figured he'd have funny stories about the Batmobile, and all he would do is talk about the Batmobile and how his Batmobile was more authentic than this other guy's Batmobile. <laughs> I was like, wow, this is so boring. Yeah, you're like, you really opened up to me, but I learned a lot about the car. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah like, oh my gosh. Feet, three inches. And the other oh my gosh. 17, nine. That's so funny. And now, now the, uh, the robots on the island too. That was really Ooh. cool. And I like the, how you've incorporated new age yeah. technology, you know, stuff that's yeah, really right relevant yeah. to your comics and been relevant, you know, that's, since. That's a real SOS. I mean, like you put your camera to it. I don't know if you did. Really? It, yeah, oh yeah, my gosh, yeah. that I, is too good, dude. I think if you're going to go in, you go all in. Wow, you went down the rabbit hole on that. <laughs> I love it. That, I didn't realize that. I'm yeah. going to have to do that now yeah. for sure. Oh, that's so cool. Um, so yeah, so you just general life, having coffee, seeing things. Um, I think we also talked about a fellow artist that I think you were familiar with, and you'll have to remind me if I'm wrong, was John Callahan. Oh, kind. Yeah, and uh, yeah. I think he, when we talked, he's similar where he got, where his, a lot of his jokes and things were just literally like us, just sitting here having coffee and you witness something or whatever. And Yeah, he said he was an idiot savant of cartooning, is what he told me once, where he doesn't know why it's funny or makes it, but you know, like for him, it was all intuitive. Um, which is great. I mean, for me, it's it like I had to approach it intellectually. Where I, I'd be, you know, what is the structure? How what's the language? How do I do this? Um, and figure it out. Yeah, so the, it's a little like a, a different approach. Um, yeah, but I've so much respect for his stuff. Oh heck yeah! Stuff. Especially the the offensive. Oh yeah. I mean, that was, I, I think I told you one of the first times I met him, I wasn't quite sure how to handle his joke. I knew of him as the cartoonist, so I knew yeah. he was had some good jokes up his sleeve and stuff, but, and then we saw the joke later, and I was like, oh, okay, now I totally, like, see where the, like, kind of dark, sense, but I loved it, and, you know, he's just so genuine of a good dude, and yeah. so, now, growing up, other, because I didn't, 
I always, my number one growing up, always wanted to be the cartoonist. Yeah. Just because yeah. I grew up Looney Tunes, I yeah. mean, I mean, blah, 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 you could go on and yeah, on. Definitely. But um, so as a kid, who was your kind of, let, let me let me reiterate. When you first, when, when when was the first time you saw, you know, like a doodle or a cartoon show or just like a, I remember I having the Garfield long books. Yeah. When did you first see something and kind of go, hey, now that would be cool as um, a profession or just, I this interests me. I, I liked it in the newspaper and reading it and trying to learn how to read. I learned how to read on the comics page. Very cool. And it just, it was always magic to me of, of how does this story happen and it's still pictures. So how do you create a narrative from still pictures? And and it, that just was magic. It still is. It it's, really it is. It still kind of blows my mind that it can work. Um, yeah, and, and it was reading that and I loved Garfield as a kid. And then, and then it was all of, like I read uh, Fat Freddy's Cat and then the unpredictability of Fat Freddy's Cat, all of a sudden it, it, it blew my mind. It was like, oh, this is what humor really is. It was like taking acid for the first time because you didn't know where it was going to go. Like you turn the page, Garfield is all about this predictability, which as a kid I loved. You know, it's like lasagna, Monday. It was, I was, was going to say. It was a riot. It was a crack up. Right. You know? But then, <laughs> Fat Freddy's cat, it was like, you turn the page and, like, he, there's a cartoon where Fat Freddy's cat is there and he's meowing for food and then all of a sudden a second one walks up and then they fight and then they both get thrown out. Right. And I was like, what the hell? Because you're used to this single character and all of a sudden there's 10 of them out outside the door and one of them says to the other, like, Hey, you're gonna blow this. This is a sweet gig. You're gonna blow it for all of us. Right. And so it's like, then I had to rethink, you know, 300 cartoons of like, oh, there's like, and it just it messed with your head and it messed with the format um, in a way that that I really appreciate. That's so cool. And that's that's what really propelled me to go. Oh, I can do anything I want, and there there aren't any rules really. Yeah. Um, you know, in a way, there aren't rules, and that, that was fascinating. That's so cool. So. That, you know, I love that you said that, too, because to jump on what you said right from the get-go, I honestly forgot that I did. I learned to read yeah. with the Garfield comics because I didn't want to read, but as soon as I got the colored Sundays, yeah. it was like, it's on, buddy. You better yeah. learn how to read because I want to know what Garfield and them are doing. And and like you said, you know, Felix the Cat, uh, Heathcliff, but yeah. then you threw, I mean, so that's so cool that your inspirations intertwine to like how you wanted to see it as well and how you would want others to yeah. kind of take it. That is so awesome, and man. I think it was like a 60 minutes documentary on Charles Schultz where he sat down at a blank piece of paper and he just started drawing the first panel and he's like, here's Snoopy at the doghouse and then it's starting to snow and then it snows more. And he's just like riffing on the page and then he's covered in snow and then the last panel is Snoopy saying drats or something like right. that. Like, oh, <laughs> Whiff or whatever, yeah. This is how to do it. Like, it, 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 it pulled back the curtain. It was like, oh, you just Gosh. do it. It's not you just sit down and do it and and that was um and just seeing somebody drawing yeah seeing Charles Schultz drawing I was like yeah that's I I, I think I actually saw that not too long ago <laughs> you can dig it up and find that video but it is really cool how he just sat at his desk there and just went to town yeah. he's just like this is how it is and then yeah. it does this and you're like don't, wow like how inspirational that. Just, is that sit and draw. that is so cool yeah. I love that and I have to remind myself of that sometimes of like don't uh just let yourself do it like yeah there, there's this something inside of you and and you know it's kind of outside yourself in a way and it's yeah like you're channeling these other ideas um which is i guess that's what callahan is very in touch with is just that you know uh, subconscious like a direct conduit to that those are the best cartoons are the ones that where you're channeling you know that's what was going to lead me to my next question. Do you feel like, just from what I've read, I can relate to too much the Too Much Coffee Man oh, yeah. character a bunch. Just from the book of, the Island Cutie book, where it's kind of the anxious, okay, I'm going to get up, I've got all these powers, and then you're like, uh-oh, not so much. And then you're like, but then the coffee talks. And that was actually this morning, you guys. I got up. I was just like pumped. I'm like, you know, we're going to do the interview, but sometimes I get a little anxious. I got a little nervous. I mean, come on now. Yeah. And, but then oh, you okay. drink some coffee and you get the powers. So yeah. 
is that kind of do you relate to your characters in a yeah, way more than i thought um more than i thought nice I, I i started too much coffee man as a gag and i was like i've got one cartoon you know one too much coffee man cartoon and i i did i was like all right this is silly and then but then but then just having him as a character and i used to write the strip by going to sleep and and i would lay there and I would just imagine the character, and he would start talking. Oh, that's and so cool! And I would see them; and they would talk, <laughs> and then I would, I would drift into sleep. But I, I would have to wake myself up to to write it down so that I would remember it. In the wow! Morning. But those are the best strips. That's so cool. Um, like the one where he hired a writer. He's sitting at the t and so he has a writer writing his dialogue for him. And then, like and a ghostwriter kind like of thing, ghost right? Yeah. yeah. He's like, well, people do this for right TV, so why not do this for <laughs> hanging out? And That's so rad. It was just, yeah, uh, like, just I, ideas it, that come to you like that when you're was, in that uh, in that state of mind, I guess. It was from sleeping. Yeah, going. Wow. To so I I would have taken it as like for me, it would have been because I get in my zone with just getting too way too buzzed yeah. on coffee or whatever and and getting into that zone my creative zone is what yeah. i call it do you feel like that's your creative zone is in that mood or it, it, just sitting around talking having ideas i all, mean all of those things i mean all like, those. for me i'm so desperate for ideas that i i play any angle i can but i i like the subconscious where that happens but other times i'm i sit down and go okay russia's invading ukraine what can i think about that and then i i just sit there and start playing with ideas that's until, cool like okay you know like who is this what is he doing okay there are tanks driving in i imagine a tank and then i imagine a bumper sticker on the tank that says, <laughs> oh, gosh. how's my invasion it was already good with the bumper sticker i'm sorry you know, yeah. <laughs> i didn't mean to cut you off but no, I, no, you no, had no, me no. a bumper sticker <laughs> oh how's my driving is that what you said how's my invasion oh my gosh and then an 800 number to call. yeah yeah <laughs> Yes. And it was like, okay, I love well, it. Now that that's works. behind the scenes, folks. Is that actually drawn out yet? No, no. I just, I'm like <laughs> just walking made it up, up here from right. between Powell's and, wow. and Albina. You it. know, like I'm walking yeah. and, I start, and I'm allowing that wow. to turn. And it stays relevant in your comics that way, too. I hope in a so. way. Yeah, that's cool, man. I had, I had a nice conversation with um, the guy that does Axe Cop and. It was just, it was really nice to, to connect with another cartoonist. Is that Portland? Is he Portland? No. Oh, okay. Uh, he's in L.A. now. Okay. We'll um, have to check him out. But he's great. He, he worked with his kid, or his younger brother, who was five, who would write it, and then he would draw it. But oh, cool! He just has this energy in the comics ideas. that I really that I really liked, and and it was it was funny because he's like, oh, too much coffee was a big influence on me, and I was like, oh, well, I love your coffee. You know, it was it was, it was a really pleasant Heck yeah. um, exchange, and it was. It's nice like when collabo that. the collabos and they create goodness that way. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah. So when you created him. And I don't mean to just focus on him, but that's who I mostly know you for as well. But I know you got a ton more stuff, and you've also got some newer uh, things that you're working on. And at the end, if you want to plug anything or anything that's going on, I would love that it's as well. Um, but, oh thing. gosh, I forgot. Oh, so I had all these questions, because yeah. I wanted to go off the cuff and just make it casual and chill, because you're just cool, man. And I, I didn't want it to make it <laughs> awkward or weird for us or any, you know, you got, you just... Thank you very much. Yeah. And what, oh, another question. Yeah. Um, and I don't want to keep your no, time. No, no. So anytime you wanted to say, okay, I'm too much coffee, man. Yeah. Um, now, like I've heard people's inspirations for how they get their ideas for their characters. Yeah. One being there was a, a well, there it wasn't, there was a, there is a cartoonist that um, would tell uh, other cartoonists like, hey, um, if you draw them a certain silhouette or something right. like to where they can be remembered. Um, now, when you were creating him, did you have that in mind? Like, I'm going to put something out there just well, so, I mean, with that yeah. giant coffee cup on his head, you got to remember him, you know, and, and like no, but then, silhouettes. But yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. yeah I, um, I, I did it because I was drawing a cartoon for the paper and nobody could ever remember my comic because it was just this generic white guy and his dog. And I would meet people at parties and they'd, I'd, I'd be like, oh, I have a cartoon in the paper. And like, oh, is it 
Jimmy Corrigan? And I'm like, no, because, uh, you know, is it Los Hooligans? No, you know, like, everybody had this thing. And, and so I thought, I need to make something that has a real hook to it. I need it. And then I thought, oh, a handle. It needs a handle. It's easy to grab on. Literally, pun, no pun intended. Yeah, pun. <laughs> that's it's cool, dude. Lowest, it needed level. a handle. I love it. Um, it really is good, yeah. though, and it is very memorable. <laughs> in fact, when I worked at Coffee People up in Northwest Portland, mm -hmm. I think when I was talking with Callahan and just kind of always loved cartoons, but is when I very first got introduced to your comic book. Uh, I think it was a book, not like yeah. an actual, you know, comic. Right. Um, right. And I just was right away. It was like, oh my gosh, just boom, like Calvin and like Calvin and Hobbes, S. Simpson. I mean, you, it gave me all those vibes in one. And I was like, dude, this is cool. This is really That's cool. Sweet, and it reminded me so much of you know growing up, flipping through the old Garfield book, flipping yeah. through the Far Side. Glar I mean, I was. My dad was friends with a lot of Portland artists, so I oh, was nice. introduced to those books just hanging out at their houses, which I'm so... And then when you yeah. did this, it brought back such good feels of that, like, hands-on physical cartoon, yeah. which, like you said, the Sunday comics and all that brought us to yeah. kind of this, you know, if it wasn't for our love of comics and stuff, and I, this means a lot to me. Yeah. It brought back a lot of good... You know, like I said, you can look at anything online now, but it's it's the old style hands-on, you know, Larson books, Garfield, you. Um, you're really keeping that good cartooning. Plus, it's Portland, so I yeah. was like, got to get you on the vlog, got to say what's up. At one point, you kind of tricked your way into production of the comic because right. you had released some um, uh, cells. Oh yeah, so, yeah, that was yeah. That so, was, that but was it was fun. cool because you you, when I listened to the question and heard your answer, it was almost like you, self, like made it happen. You like perceived it. You kind of yeah. like, but you never. It wasn't a trick because you did follow through. Yeah, and it made it happen. So in a way. Did you know in your own head, did you vision a, hey, if I do it this way, it might work out better? Or did you just go for it? No, I just went for it. I was like, this is funny. But mostly that it was funny. That was the thing that... That's so that, cool. And, and I, I just liked... Um, I just liked that play. I mean, same with the Japanese bootleg t-shirt, where I wanted to use kanji on a t-shirt. And so the only way I thought I could do that legitimately was to have it sold in Japan and and I and then I thought well I couldn't do that and I thought well I could have it bootlegged in Japan oh, cool. and then I was like well I can't do that and I thought well I could just say it was bootlegged and I'm bootlegging the bootleg <laughs> and so I was like well that works and so then I did that and which I thought was funny <laughs> and then I funny. ended up licensing that design to yeah. Japan so it was another one of those things where wow. you know Pretending that the reality is following the gag. That it, it was, actually worked out. It, I mean, it, it does. Yeah, it, it was weird. In a way, you know, kind of, my question was, is because, so you hand, you hand stapled your very first comics. Yeah. And at the time, you guys, you can elaborate as well. I mean, there, to have a, somebody sell work included with the comic was huge for collectors and folks yeah, that just yeah. enjoyed comics in general. So you were like, hey, look, with this sell, it's going to make this comic as well as the animation so much more valuable. Yeah. And so it sold itself because people like cells and artwork, and your artwork was already cool. So, and you know, all hand drawn. Hand drawn. And, and yeah, you buy 10 comics, so you have a, a sales incentive to a comic book store. So if they buy 10 comics, they get a, a incentive. And so usually it's some, I don't know, like a print or some bullshit thing. Um, but I thought a sell from the, from the cartoon is what I, you know, there was no cartoon. So, I, but then I hand drew all these cells, I, and then I ended up selling ten thousand comics. Right. So I had to do a thousand wow. cells. Now, which, did, and then you kept copies of the cell because when you had to redo, when you actually made the animation movie, mm. no, the cells weren't in it. <laughs> I love it. Sorry, we can edit yeah. that part if you no, want. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. It's, it's, I mean, that, that's the thing. It was, a, it was a gag, and, and I right? put random numbers on the top right corner. Oh, that's so cool. It was, part of a cartoon wow so those are out there somewhere oh, yeah. someone's got them that's it, cool and i knew gosh those are cool man i knew that that you know like you it, it's a, a piece of original art oh right? yeah with animated with you know i i wouldn't looked at cells i love cells they're so cool them, 
and they were expensive. It was like 25 cents a pop. But then I could buy these little acetate sheets for about three cents a pop. And then a friend of mine worked at an animation company where they had a uh, cell punch. Oh, punch. So no I, way. So I just took... <laughs> oh, that's right. Okay. So oh, I wow. These little acetate sheets and then punched them so it looked like So they cells. were legit, yeah. And then, and then I would draw on them and then my friends would paint the back. And then I just would do, I, I bought pizza and Oh beer my for gosh, that is so to, cool. To do the painting. How cool is that, dude? <laughs> now talk about like hands on, physical, know your work. I mean, yeah. that to me, you made it. I mean, you, yeah, you, you made it because weird, you perceived yourself. I mean, you did it. Yeah. You, 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 yeah. you foresaw did you cells. did this footwork and that's what it takes, man. And, and, you know, and, and, yeah, the, the, yeah, you heard the, it first folks. You got to put the work in, man. I yeah. mean, and it makes like, it so much yeah. sweeter. It was funny. It was silly. I mean, the that's whole thing cool. was silly. And I, yeah, I just wanted to imply to store owners that it would be like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, like that, that I had this track for doing a cartoon. And that they just hadn't heard about it yet, and then, but then yeah, and then the comic came out, so that got the sales up. At That's so cool. Big enough so that I could then do a cartoon. Weren't they like when you first had them? They were like little mini ones, if I remember. Yeah, the, I first did mini comics. Okay. And did then um, and then published a comic with my friends, and so we each so we had an anthology, um, and then kind of on the uh, shoulders of that, I I was able I did a comic so thing. cool and then the converse commercial which i love yeah i come home from school in the 90s boom boom oh there it is that's so rad that was danny antonucci that i worked with on that was it loop of the butcher and, i mean it was just yeah. those were intensely cool man oh, they really man, were it was really that was really cool. i really like those he's yeah, very he's cool nice work. he's a real animator like a you know it's all hand cells and that's so cool high energy guy yeah, I love it. Privilege. I, I love very it. Lucky. Very cool, man. <laughs> Thank you again. This has been such an awesome experience, and I just love, sure. you know, talking with you, and just yeah, I love all this. And thank you, man. I'm very cool of you. Very cool. <laughs> but where they, where can they find you, and give them all the good rundown of? Uh, just on, you know, I have a website, but then the Etsy shop is where I sell stuff, and I try to, I don't know, as a kid and getting drawings from cartoonists, that was something that meant a lot. To me and so I try to price you know cartoons that I've, I've drawn and published I try to price them to be real affordable so I have a lot of original art up on, up on Etsy um, and then you know Facebook and all that other good Twitter and all that. it's the usual crap. so Shannon Wheeler dot com uh, yeah for Shannon all that Wheeler dot com and um, for the for my website and then Facebook it's just the Shannon Wheeler and Twitter I think is much coffee um, yeah, Twitter's much coffee. And then Etsy, just search for too much coffee, man, and it'll pop right up. All one word. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Speaking of which, let's go get another one. All right. Look at this, you guys. So I flip open the cover, and right away, oh, look at that. <laughs> that is so cool. <sighs> he did a little, little cat in a cup, and then he signed it for me as well. Oh my gosh, that is so incredibly nice. And, uh, Gosh darn it, I couldn't thank him enough for that. And like I said, this is his uh, this is his new book, so you guys are definitely gonna wanna check this out, and I will leave links as well to all his information so that you can pick it up. And in fact, he just informed me that that's a real uh, QR code that you can scan. <laughs> he said, I uh, can really go down the rabbit hole and, and scan it. And So yeah, I'll leave links up for sure. You guys should pick one of these up. Um, like I said, physical comics, you know what I mean? The physical copy. And again, this is just, just incredible. I'm gonna have to get this, get this framed very soon. That's gonna do it for today. If you guys are new here, make sure you hit that red subscribe button. You can ring that bell. That way when I creep, you guys will be the first to creep. If you did enjoy this, give it a big thumbs up. Until next time, Creeper out for now. Peace.